Michael, we're entering an election cycle, a presidential election cycle. We've, we've been discussing tangentially and your most recent publication, which is Nationalism on the Skeptic magazine, also comes into play. And I would, li I would like to connect both your publication and your book Conspiracy in terms of the election cycle. What are we, how are we supposed to approach this cycle and what are some of the things we should be in the lookout for in terms of information overload, conspiracy theories, and all of these ideas that get thrown out of us to either divide us or make us vote for one person against the other? What are some of your thoughts on this? Mm, right. I'm less worried than I was a few weeks ago. Uh, I was worried that Trump will probably get the nomination for the GOP, um, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Uh, I, I mean, I was worried about it because, uh, as you know, he's never even conceded that he lost, yeah. even though he did lose. He absolutely lost. Everybody knows but him. Maybe even he knows and he's just you know lying. But maybe he really believes that he won. I don't know. But um, but for the most part, again, back to the peaceful transfer of power, this is a fundamental element of our democracy. If we can't have that, we don't really have a democracy. So that was where I'm worried about that. You know, you hear this talk of civil war. There's not going to be a civil war or anything like what we had in the 1860s, but but there could be a lot of violence and and conflict like that. And just general divisiveness is not good. Again, you know, the cover here of people screaming at each other out of hatred. So, you know, I would like to see more, um, I guess, the way it used to be done, apparently, from what we have people that study congressional relationships across the aisle, that congressmen and senators from different parties used to hang out with each other. On the weekends, their kids would, you know, play soccer games or whatever together, and they'd see each other. They'd have dinner together and drinks together, and then dis disagree with each other over immigration or tax policy or abortion or whatever. But they still got along, right? And th that apparently no longer happens. They, you know, they just, you know, hate each other, and that the other side is not just wrong, not just different, not just wrong, but immoral, evil. They want to destroy America, you know, and the right accuses the left of that, and vice versa. I, you know, we just have to get uh, past that. And it's in part driven by uh, social media, uh, starting with actually conservative talk radio. I'm old enough to remember when this happened, when I started uh, uh, listening to Rush Limbaugh. And and it's like, holy crap, this guy is just, just like way out there. And the, and the further out he went, the bigger his ratings got and the larger the audience. I thought, oh, boy. Wow. Yeah. But I kept waiting for the, the equivalent of that on the left. Right. And there wasn't anybody doing that. Now we have maybe Bill Maher, Rachel Maddow, a few others, but nothing like Hannity and Tucker Carlson and and, uh, you know, so, so forth. Not all the radio people. There's just nothing like that. And and I I think the driving mechanism is that elected officials listen to those people and they think, boy, I don't want to be denounced by Sean Hannity on Fox News. Oh, my God, if I am, my constituency is going to disown me. So I better say things that, you know, they're going to repeat or have me on their show. And I think that fuels it. Uh, you know, if if you're caught talking to or being friendly with a Democrat, if you're a Republican, maybe you get denounced on Fox News and then and then then you fear for your election. Or in the case of Liz Cheney, you know, you hold sacred, deep values like honesty, integrity and truth over and above your political um, uh, platform, you know, planks in your platform like immigration or, or gun control or, or war or abortion or whatever. Liz Cheney gave up all of that in, in to, to honor her deeper commitment to truth. And, and that ruined her career. She's done because Trump denounced her. Now, maybe she can make a comeback. Who knows? But, uh, but I, that's what I'm worried about. You know, we just, let's just get back to kind of normal, normal, dirty politics rather than, you know, what we're, we've been experiencing lately. You know, what'll happen in 2024? It's hard to say, you know, I don't know. Really, no one knows, um, you know, maybe DeSantis or, 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 or um, you know, Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio, there's probably a dozen that we're going to see come out in the next probably about six months from now, they'll start coming out and making noise about running. And then we'll see, you know, how, how Trump fares against them. He'll come up with his little um, schoolyard nicknames for them, like, you know, low energy Jeb and Lion Ted and, and little Marco and, and so on. He tried that with DeSantis. It didn't go over well. Desa uh, Ron DeSanctimonious, I think is you know, too many syllables. His followers are like, what? 
<laughs> What's sanctimonious? I don't even know what that means. Right. So I think uh, I think maybe his schoolyard taunts aren't going to work anymore, which is good. Um, I don't think Trump should be allowed anywhere near the White House. He should maybe he should even be in prison for all I know. I don't know. I'm not. Uh, now I know people listening to this. Go, oh, Shermer's got Trump derangement syndrome. No, I don't. You do. If you think this guy should be president, you you are deranged, right? I mean, he you know he is not a conservative. He has no values other than whatever serves him well. You know, he is a dark triad psychopath, Machiavellian, um, and uh, what's the third one? Uh, so psychopathy, Machiavellianism, narcissism. and narcissism. Yeah, narcissism. And uh, yeah, so that's anyway. So I'm kind of rambling now. I don't. I don't want to focus too much on Trump. But you asked, what am I concerned? That would be it. If he if he just disappears and the GOP gets back to the way they usually do things, and they come up with somebody like a John McCain or a Mitt Romney, somebody like that, then then I'm not. If if they got elected, then I I wouldn't be worried.